All right, guys, same as always, I fucking cuss. Welcome back. I missed you fuckers. Hey, guys. So how about that fucking coronavirus, right? So my spring break has been extended another week, and they're moving all of my classes to online. Hip, hip, her fucking ray. I'm so happy. I mean, just... This was my last full semester, and I'm so... I, I personally don't get it. I mean, I, I, I guess I understand why they're doing it, but I just feel like it's, I don't know, man. I feel like it's taking an extreme turn, but let me know what you guys are having to go through because I know not all of you live in the U.S., but it's worldwide. So, I mean, I'm curious to know what all is going on with you guys. So, like I said, they may, they extended our spring break and they're putting all of our classes online. And I've heard five other states have actually closed down all schools, all daycares, and they're going to make it all online. And I'm just sitting here wondering, like, my conspiracy mind is going, and I'm like, what if this is just a test run to see if we can do everything online? Because, I don't know, I feel like that's going to be the future one day. But the other thing is, I thought, man, what about the parents? Like, because think about parents out there. How... Because they have to work. I mean, so how are they going to, I mean, who's going to watch their kid? Who's going to, you know, how are they going to be when their kid's not in school? I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel like that's going to be more trouble than it's worth. But I feel the same way about the college. I feel like having everyone do it online is going to be way more trouble than it's worth. Because we have over 20,000 students, and I just think, my goodness, I mean, I believe it's over 20,000, and I'm just like, my goodness, how, how are they going to do that? How are they going to put over 20,000 students all online, and some of these professors are older and don't even like using the internet, so I'm not, I don't know, not sure how that's going to work, but <laughs> enough about that, on to this. Um, so this one's Bramble Claw or Bramble Star. And as you can see, I added a bunch of fur to him. And I think that helped immensely. Now all I have to do is paint him. And I loved y'all's I love all of y'all's suggestions. You know, you, I will always read your comments. Just because I don't comment back, trust me, I will always read your comments. I have a busy life, but I always read comments. And I followed a lot of your suggestions and definitely right about adding fur and to make him look more like Bramble Claw or Star. And you're right, he is he is technically related to Shadow Sight, so yeah, it makes sense that he would look like him a little bit. But I think he looks a lot better now, and I think he'll look even better when he's done. We have Mr. O'Cart. If you haven't seen a map, I believe it's by Fluffy Lovely. Um, it's called uh, Baby It's Cold Outside, and it's a Christmas map with warriors. This is that O'Cart design inspired me to add some stuff to him to make him look kind of like that, because I think it looks remarkably better. Another thing I did that I wanted to tell you guys about is I never really liked working with amber eyes because I feel like they always came out either too light or too orange. So when I looked up on Google amber eyes, I noticed a dark brown rim around the iris. So I decided to do that. I took the same color as their pelt color and made a dark rim outside the eyes and it works wonders as you can see he's got a dark rim right outside his iris and it just really makes the eyes pop i mean it looks incredible same with okart i used the same reddish brown color as his coat and it just really really brings those eyes to life it's amazing we have miss briar light her head's finally back on permanently. I wanted her to look like she was pushing herself up. Plus, she's supposed to have strong shoulder and uh, forelegs because she carries herself around all the time. The leaves were added to not only give her some character look, like she's got some stuff tangled in her fur, but 
also to give her a more stable base so she doesn't fall. And she's got a jay's feather weaved into her chest. She came out really nice. We have Mr. Birchfall. You know, Birchfall deserves a lot more credit than he gets. You know, his siblings died when he was young and his mother was going through grief during that time and his father was comforting his mother. So he had to go through a lot and I was amazed that he actually turned out to be a really good father to Ivy Pool and Dovewing, and he's just one of those background characters that gets glossed over too much to me. And yeah, I was kind of upset about that. So he's he's a very good character. Here we have Spark Pelt. She was the old Fire Star, and then I'm redoing my old Tiger Star. I have a few ideas for him that I'm going to try. And then we have Stonefur. His legs look ridiculous right now, but I'm gonna use a Dremel tool to uh, shave them down. He's probably going to come out looking like the uh, needle tail model. And her legs look the same way, big and bulky like the Michelin Man. So they start out looking that way, but once they're shaving down, they look more normal. So he'll look really good. I have Fallen Leaves. I can't remember if I showed him last video, but he came out very nice. Love the color scheme. Love his eyes. Got a little leaf on his chest. And then this one I wanted to show. She came with a Glamour pack of the Littlest Pet Shop. She was just a head, so I went ahead and am creating her a body from scratch. I actually glued her head on top of uh, four toothpicks so that she could still spin her head around. And as I said, I'm building her a body from scratch. So <laughs> I want you guys to see her process because it's going to be very interesting. But yeah, so far, I mean, I'm still working on them, guys. I'm still going to college, trying to figure everything out, so. But you guys all stay well, stay indoors, and we're going to fucking survive this, okay? Like, you know, I'm actually older than Moon Kitty, and, and just to give you an idea of how old I am. And when I was 15, there was actually a meningitis outbreak here in Texas. And the only thing I remember was there being long lines to get the meningitis vaccine, which my mother and I actually waited in and got our vaccines. But I have never seen anything like this. I mean, not to the point where they want to shut everything down and it's affecting the economy. And I understand it's because it's worldwide, but I mean, goodness. Like, I mean, it's just insane. But... I'm telling you guys about the meningitis scare because I want you guys to know this has happened before. I mean, there's been outbreaks before and, you know, people, we survive, we carry on, it's going to be okay. I mean, some people panic and go overboard, but, and I think the media has played a big role in a lot of this stuff, but we're going to be okay. I mean, it's going to be okay. Just... Stay indoors, wash your hands, stay cleanly. You should be okay. Oh, here's Hawk Frost. Almost forgot to show him. He's coming along nicely. His legs look a little funny too, but once they're shaving down, they'll look better. But yeah, just showing you guys I'm still working on them. Okay, guys, thanks so much for the support. See ya.